In this video, you will learn how to parse HTML using PHP. We will only use PHP's native classes without depending on any other external libraries. So, why do we want to parse HTML? Or what are the practical uses? One important application is web scraping. That is, if you want to get data from another website, you can use these techniques. However, if it is legal or not, that's a different story. In some cases, it's alright, while sometimes it may not be. Another important use for parsing HTML is to modify the output of your own website. For example, in WordPress, there is a filter called the content which allows you to alter the post's HTML content before displaying it. For example, you can use it to insert ad code between paragraphs, show the date at the beginning of blog posts or any such manipulations. Before going into the code, let me introduce the important PHP classes we will be using in this tutorial. First is DOM document. It is a class that represents the whole HTML document, that is the document object model. It provides methods to load HTML and XML as a string or as a file. DOM node. It is the class from which DOM document inherits. DOM node list. It's a list of DOM nodes which is iterable using for each loop. DOM element. Represents the elements in a document. This class also inherits from the DOM node class. And finally, XPath, which allows us to perform complex DOM queries. We will see how to do the following operations using the methods and properties provided by these classes. Selecting elements by its ID, selecting elements using tag name, selecting elements using XPath query, create and insert new elements into the page, delete an element from the page, getting element attribute values, setting attribute values. With that, let us dive into the code. First, let us see how to scrape a web page. Inside our project folder, create a new file called scrape.php, then open php tag and begin the curl operations. First, define the curl handle, then set the curl URL. Here, I am going to scrape a page from my own blog so no need to worry about any legal issues. Set the return transfer option to true so that we can save the HTML response to a variable. Execute the curl. To make sure the request is successful, just output the HTML variable and load the page in a browser. We are seeing some unstyled content, that means the request is successful and the variable HTML holds the data we want to work with. So let us move on to the first example, that is to find out all the heading elements in the document. For that, create an instance of the class DOM document. The class includes a function called load HTML which can load a DOM from an HTML or XML string. So call it and pass our HTML string. To suppress any warnings, include the at symbol in the front. As we have loaded the HTML into a document object model, now we can start parsing it. Use the get elements by tag name method to select all the S2 elements. The method will return an object of the class DOM node list, which we can iterate using for each. Optionally, you can initiate another array to store the values from the DOM node list. Then iterate the object and retrieve the heading text using the text content property. You can store the value or output it. Now if you reload the page, you can see all the headings. That is, the page we scraped has 6 heading elements and our symbol script has pulled all of them and displayed it. Let us look at one more example to find all the links in the article. That is, the page contains a blog post and we want to find all the links inside that post, not the entire page. So just like before, initiate the DOM document object and load the HTML string. Then using get elements by tag name, 
get all the article elements. By looking at the page, we know that it contains only one article element. So we can use the item method and pass the value 0 to get the first element. On the other hand, if there are more than one element, you can pass the index of the element you want to get. Now the variable article holds an instance of the DOM document class which is our blog post. Then apply the get elements by tag name method again on that article to pull all the anchor tags inside it. Then iterate the links variable to get each individual link element and display it. Use the text content property to get the text and get attribute method to get the href value. Then if we load the page, we should see the result. To make it more readable, add some break tags. So that is how you can scrape any web page and get the hyperlinks in it. Similarly, you can pull any details from any page using these methods. Now instead of showing the results, you can also save it into a file using PHP's file functions fopen, fwrite and fclose. After loading the page again, you can see a new file called links which contains the information we have just pulled. So that was the basics of web scraping with PHP which only dealt with reading data. Now we can move on to the next application that is manipulating the HTML data of your own website. For that I will create a sample web page. This is the template I am going to use, a free shop template based on bootstrap. I have made a few edits to it such as adding some images and some categories to make it look more real. You can see the full code I have used in my github account. The html template is inside the templates directory and the sample images are inside the assets directory. Also grab this zip file if you want to get the full source code. This is the downloaded folder and I will just copy the template and the assets to the project directory. Back in the code editor, create a new file called shop.php where we will use the HTML template we have just copied. Open PHP tag and include the HTML file. Then if we load the page, you should see the output. But that is not what we want. We want to manipulate the HTML before outputting. So use PHP's output buffering so that PHP will buffer the output from the include directive. And then use obgetclean function to assign the output to a variable. As we now have the HTML in a variable, we can parse and manipulate it. After that, echo it. Coming to the parsing part, First let us see how to insert a new element into the document. Say for example I want to find the number of products in the show page and show that number at the top of the page. As usual initiate the DOM document and load the HTML string. We have to add the number of products above the list of products. So what we have to do first is to select the product list element. 
If we check the page using Chrome inspection tools, you can see that the element has an ID called product list. Back in the editor, use the get element by ID method to select the list element, that is the element that wraps the list of products. Next to find the number of products, we want to select all the products. If we check in Chrome, we can see that the products are wrapped in div elements as direct children of the parent div with the id product list. To perform such complex DOM queries, we can use XPath. If you are hearing the term for the first time, check out this page where you can see common queries and its CSS equivalents. So create an instance of the class DOM XPath. Then use the query method and pass our query string. Here note that double slashes in the query selects all child elements while single slashes only select the direct children of the preceding element. Then with the length attribute get the number of items which is the required number we are looking for. Next, we have to create a new element to insert this number. For that, use the create element method from the DOM document class. The first parameter is the wrapper tag and the second is the content inside that element. Then call the insert before method on the parent node of our product list element to insert the newly created element. The first parameter is the element to add and the second one is the reference node before which the new element will be added. Here the reference node is the product list element itself. After inserting save the document using the save HTML function. Reload the page and you should see the new element. And there is one more thing I would like to mention here. That is, earlier we loaded the HTML using the load HTML method. If we do it like this, without providing any additional options, DOM document will add extra HTML body and doc type tags to our document if it's not present while saving. So, if we are processing a part of the HTML, we should give these additional libxml parameters. Otherwise, it results in duplicate tags and can look like this. Here it is not required as we are providing the full HTML, but still I am adding it just to show you. To give it some style, we can add a few classes to the element. For that, use the set attribute method on the newly created element and provide the name of the attribute and the value. Reload the page and you can see the styled element. This is a bootstrap template, so our classes are already defined in the style sheet. We will see one more example. Suppose I want to delete an element from the document before outputting it on the page. For example, this title element. From the elements tab, we know that the title is a heading element whose parent is a div element with the class called lg9 inside the container die. This will be the CSS selector and we will use the same thing with XPath query. The variable title now holds the DOM node list object and to get the element from it, use the item method with the index value.
then finally call the remove child method on the parent node to delete the title element from the document load the page and you should see the title is now gone so we have discussed most of the important classes and methods you can use to parse html using php but that's not all when you have time take a look at class definitions given in php's documentation and play around with it if you found this video helpful hit the like button and subscribe for more coding tips like this thank you for watching